Hello, my lovely viewers from around the world. And have I told you lately how much I appreciate you? I really do. I consider you all to be almost like part of my family. Like, I just want you all to know that your presence in my life, all of your likes and your comments, uh, they validate my experience in this world. They make me feel less alone. And uh, if I haven't told you all lately, I just want you to know how much I appreciate you. Uh, thank you for being there. Thank you for subscribing to my channel. Thank you for providing ideas and observations in the comments that spark ideas for videos. This channel would not be what it is without all of you. So thank you so much. I quickly wanted to make a video today to tell you about something uh, Johnny Ambidextrous posted on my video about virtue signaling just now. He linked us to a study which shows that owning a dog is influenced by our genetic makeup. This study was conducted in Sweden and the results were published last year. Check this out. Scientists have studied the heritability of dog ownership using information from 35,035 twin pairs from the Swedish Twin Registry. The new study suggests that genetic variation explains more than half of the variation in dog ownership, implying that the choice of getting a dog is heavily influenced by an individual's genetic makeup. This is incredibly fascinating to me, and I thought you should all be aware of this study. What is going on here? And what is it about our genetics that would influence our choice to become a dog owner? You know, some of you might remember the video I made about uh, pets and uh, mind-controlling parasites, how parasites might be controlling our minds. And I had a lot of people tell me I went off the deep end. They thought this was a very far-fetched idea. I stand by it. When you think that toxoplasmosis, which is a parasite that lives in cats, has been shown to affect the minds of rodents, causing them to engage in self-destructive behaviors, and is also linked with mental illness in humans, and not just mental illness, but certain behaviors, risky behaviors, self-destructive behaviors, it isn't far-fetched to believe there could be a similar pathogen in dogs that is likewise affecting our minds. When you consider the fact that dogs are routinely infecting humans with zoonotic diseases that cause blindness, that cause lifelong disability, <laughs> meningitis, death, when you consider the fact that most healthy dogs have a bacteria in their mouths called capnocytophaga, which causes people to lose their noses and their limbs and their lives. Uh, when you consider that dogs raised in loving homes that were well socialized, that never showed any aggression whatsoever for many, many years, are routinely attacking, maiming, disfiguring, and killing people in unprovoked attacks, especially our most vulnerable children and the elderly. These people don't care. Having a dog in your home or in your community is 100% unnecessary. Why do they do it? Why do they try so hard to thrust their dog obsession onto others? Why do they become offended when you do not share their dog obsession? It's really, really weird. This inability people have to learn from the tragedies of others, the way people deny facts and deny reality, their irrationality, their reckless, dangerous behavior. I mean, what else can explain that but a mind-controlling parasite? Some of us say brainwashing. I think brainwashing is a large component in this, but uh, I stand by my theory. Now, I think people uh, choose to own dogs for the same reason grasshoppers and crickets are leaping to their deaths into bodies of water. 
And the same reason mice and rats lose their instinctive fear of the scent of cat urine and instead become attracted to the scent of cat urine. And the same reason many other species lose their ability to function normally and put themselves in danger. It's because they're infected with a mind-controlling parasite. Uh, that causes them to self-destruct, to put themselves in danger, to put their offspring in danger. Because placing an unpredictable, fanged, flesh-eating predator that has no morals, dogs have no conscience. They are conscienceless. They routinely attack out of the blue because they have a prey drive. Not because they were provoked or mistreated, but because their victims looked and sounded like wounded prey. Would you want a sociopath or a psychopath in your house? Of course not. Dogs are basically sociopaths in that they lack the capacity to feel guilt or remorse. They have no empathy. They do not love. To place such a creature next to your offspring is mental. It's not normal. It goes against nature. So anyway, I think there is an as yet undiscovered pathogen of some kind, similar to toxoplasmosis, that is affecting people's minds. Now a lot of you are wondering, well, why is it not discovered yet? Well, there are a lot of things that are not discovered yet. We don't have all the answers. People are discovering things every day in the scientific community. But I think a main reason is that most people working in the scientific community, in the medical community, are themselves infected. And the nature of this disease is denial. People cannot see that they are sick. It's like they can't see reality. They can't be rational. They can't think rationally. They're not seeing clearly. So that's the nature of this disease. Thankfully, you know, I know a couple of people working in mental health who are not infected. Uh, and I'm sure that there must be a few scientists in this world who are not infected. And I'm hoping they will watch this video, hear about my videos, and then conduct some proper scientific research into this. This study supports my theory because it's possible. It's, it shows, like, look, they don't know what genes are involved. They don't understand the mechanism involved. They don't know what's going on here, and more research needs to be done. But it is very possible that somehow the genes in certain people are able to switch on and off. Like I talked about how I uh, changed the way I felt and thought about dogs when I became pregnant. My feelings for dogs changed drastically. They did a 180. This is extremely common in pregnant women. Millions of women share their experiences online. Go have a look for yourself. And I made a video about it. But why does it happen to some women and not others? To me, the only answer that makes sense is that it's something genetic. W what is going on here? I think that somehow there are genes that are triggered by the pregnancy hormone to switch on and to provide some sort of barrier some sort of protection against this mind-controlling dog parasite. And when that is switched on, the woman comes to her senses. She sees dogs for what they are. She is once again, or maybe for the first time in her life, able to think rationally about dogs. In some people, it seems this is switched on from birth. They never fall prey to this pathogen. You know, some people are lifelong dog rationalists. They were never able to be brainwashed by mainstream propaganda. They had uh, this certain mysterious defense in place from birth. And uh, I don't know what it is exactly, 
but I think that it is something that can be switched on by the pregnancy hormone. I think that uh, it is genetic and that a lot more research needs to be done before we understand what is going on here. But this is my theory. And I, I, I just thought I would share this study, which supports my theory with you all and uh, continue to provide this food for thought, I guess. But you know, it's just a theory. Maybe this has nothing whatsoever to do with mind controlling parasites. If you watched my video about neuroscience, they talk about how uh, the brains of people who are more susceptible to uh, propaganda uh, and brainwash are, they seem to be organically different from the brains of people who are not as susceptible to propaganda. So maybe that's the genetic difference we're talking about here when it comes to dog ownership. Like I said, a lot more research needs to be done. But if the genetic link to dog ownership has nothing to do with mind controlling parasites and barriers to protect against mind controlling parasites, let's say the genetic component here that we're talking about has to do only with the organic differences between the brains of people who are unable to think critically, unable to think independently, unable to question authority, people who are, you know, more susceptible to propaganda and brainwash and peer pressure versus the brains of people who are able to think critically, independently, and, you know, people who are able to question authority and people who are not so influenced by propaganda and peer pressure and brainwash. If that's all we're talking about, you know, is just organic differences in the way people's brains are wired, then what is it that happens during pregnancy? And why do so many women snap out of their stupor and wake up and begin to see dogs for what dogs truly are? What is going on here? I really like to think about these things and I would like to hear or read what you guys think about these things. So please share your thoughts in the comments below. And I just thought I would let you all know that I do not have Asperger's or Asperger's syndrome or whatever it's called. It's really interesting. People in my canine aversion Facebook group, uh, someone recently said that they were suggested a video or they got, they had a video recommendation uh, uh, based on what they had previously viewed. And it said, because you viewed... Uh, canine aversion, uh, we recommend this video about Asperger's. And I was like, what? That's weird. I don't have Asperger's. And uh, yesterday I got a comment on my channel. Someone was asking if I had Asperger's. Where is this coming from? Why would anyone assume that? I find that very f curious. Uh, I know that I, I do think very differently from other people. I believe this is because of my personality type. I'm an INTJ. And this is very interesting, too, because I posted that in the canine group and two other women came forth and said that they are also INTJs. We are very logical, rational people. We're guided by logic and not emotion. Uh, I'll put a link to the INTJ personality type uh, profile or whatever you call it, description. Uh, I'll put that in the description below so you can read through it. It will maybe help you to understand me better. Uh, and I'm just really curious if you guys have ever... Uh, taken this personality test. Uh, are you also INTJ? Like, ooh, this is very interesting to me. And finally, I'm going to be going on a little vacation for about a week uh, just to focus on some painting and just to take a little mental health break, I guess. But I will be back soon with a most excellent video that I think you're all going to like. It's going to be about baby talk, how these dog worshippers use baby talk when they talk to their dogs or even when they talk to each other about their dogs there's some really fascinating psychology involved in that so stay tuned i will be back soon and until then i wish you well take care of yourselves be safe and remember the future is dog free <laughs>